I tell people that, um, you know, I, I was probably never going to be an actor. Because if you think back, 1985, when I came here, Asian actors starring in Hollywood films. There was one. His name was Shogasugi. Hey guys, in today's video we got Don the Dragon Wilson, kickboxing legend, talking about how he got started in movies, and he's also going to talk about the Blood Fist TV series that he was working on, but something happened, and uh, we'll see if they still do that. But anyway, check this out. I was able to meet the dragon in person at Alan Goldberg's martial arts event, and I got this autograph to David, the martial arts sensation. Comment below, by the way, if you know where you may have heard that reference before, the martial arts sensation. And he said, uh, best wishes, thanks for the kickboxing lesson, signed Don Wilson. So that's really cool. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel by hitting the like button, subscribing, and sharing the video. Because, yeah. look, in video stores, you don't look as old as me, but if you, you remember, there's a store you'd go in there and rent videos every week. People would come for the weekend to see what they're going to uh, rent. There was an entire section for martial arts. I remember the martial that. Arts section. That's the section there, I there was That's all I rented back in the day. Man. There was sci-fi, there was drama, there was comedy, there was martial arts testing. Now, in human activities, you could say martial arts is like a sport, sort of, right? Was there a tennis section where there's all the tennis movies? <laughs> was there a golf section with all the movies of golf, you know, actors playing golf? No, there have been some boxing movies and there's been some golf movies. What was the one that, um, I guess uh, Kevin Costner did where he was a golfer or whatever. There have been some, but we had a section of the video store specifically for the activity that I was a champion of, martial arts, martial arts competition. Kickboxing was a, a kind of a professional martial arts competition I competed in. So we had an advantage to get into movie business that a lot of actors did not have. You know, we, yeah. we have a, a thing that we do. Now, look, Keanu Reeves is, looks pretty darn good, you know, now. I, I'm sure he's been taking some martial art lessons. Uh, Jason Statham looks pretty good. Uh, but I, I believe they are what I still consider like movie martial arts and that they, they, they were actually are actors first. The martial arts came later. Mm -hmm. And then, then they could do that genre because they wanted to do that genre. And um, for me, it was, move, it was acting, or excuse me, it was martial arts. Then I became kickboxer. And then Chuck Norris, it's Chuck Norris who, who got me, by the way, the, to, to, to bring back more information about the, my film career. The only reason why I'm in Hollywood doing movies is because of Chuck Norris. Because he's the one, he's the first person who was in the movie industry that I met and, and it suggested I do it. He suggested, he said, look, Don, uh, I was a fighter. Bruce Lee put me in one movie and then I, I thought maybe I could make a career out of it. And I, I, I tried a few more movies and he said, it's been a great second career for me. And um, he said, you should try it. Don the Dragon Wilson, highest rated champion in kickboxing history. So when I retired the first time, because I retired three times, I retired the first time was in 1984. I moved out in 85, got an agent, went enrolled in several different acting schools. I, I even hired acting coaches to personally work with me. So I did like a crash course of how to be an actor because I didn't want to start off bit parts, little character roles. I wanted to star in movies. Yeah. So yeah. I was going to go from a total unknown to a movie star. So I needed crash courses in acting because the star is the guy who's in every scene and he carries the whole movie, right? The movie. Yeah, sure. Right. Finally, a major martial arts movie starring the greatest kickboxers in the world. Don Wilson is quite frankly a one man army. American Karate Magazine. Okay. Well, my first time in the movie was Blood Fist and I was the star. I and didn't have a budget. The theater, like you mentioned. It was, in, it, was yeah, it was one of the top 100 of, of uh, independent films of all time when it was released. Blood Fist, a gathering of the most awesome human weapons. Um, which didn't mean a lot because, you know, it was back in the days. I don't know how much it grossed. I think it grossed by maybe a little under $2 million. Do you know what the but budget the, on that was? Independent films, independent films didn't gross that much back then. I think it was like $1.7 I believe. It was theatrical. You can Google it, though, and it'll pop up. Uh, Blood Fist, uh, theatrical release, gross or whatever. Do you think know what the one. budget, real quick, Don? Like the, what the budget on? Yeah, the direct. Well, listen, nobody opens their bank account and says, "Here's how much money we got." But the director told me that um, he went over everything and he's thinking. He says, "You know what? Uh, this, the budget of this movie is under two hundred thousand. Mm. 
Mm. So it made 10 now, times its money. Uh, yeah. At the end, at the end of the release of it, it had grossed total worldwide and on video because the video it sold, I think, 60 or 70,000 cassettes. You could probably Google that. And anyway, it, it made a, a, it grossed worldwide sales about 10 million. Wow. It was made for 200,000. That's that's so, good. that's a return, man. That's why they made well, so many MGM of them. Released, name. MGM released the video. So Roger thought it was a fluke. I think it sold 60,000 cassettes. So Roger did Blood Fist 2. He made Blood Fist the most popular kickboxing movie of all time. Now, Blood Fist 2. And it did the same numbers. Mm -hmm. So Roger figured, you know what? It's not a fluke. This guy stars in a movie. It's going to make money. So Roger calls me up and he says, Don, I'm going to release my first video myself. I'm not going to sell the rights to your next movie, which is MGM. He said, we're going to do a science fiction movie called Future Kick. International box office sensation, Don the Dragon Wilson, WKA World Kickboxing Champion. And we're shooting it in Venice and whatever. Anyway, the same, that's the same studio James Cameron got it started in. It's Corman's studio. Yeah, a lot of people did, man. Yeah. So, so anyway, uh, I, um, I said, yeah, yeah, Roger, it sounds great. You know, I, I, I was not in any position to bargain. I just would do, he was my mentor. He said, I'm going to do this movie. So um, I do the movie and Roger releases the video. And I think he made about three and a half million on the video. Wow. That movie was probably made since he owned the studio, he owned the facilities. He had all of these like um, college students working there, like the crew. And what they, they were doing is they were doing intern. He called them interns where they work for free. <laughs> but they're, they're learning on how to be the AD, how to do the sound, how to be the gabber, how to be the other. Anyway, whatever. So he spent probably under 200000 for that movie. Wow. Just the video sales alone was, was over $3 million for Corman. And so he started his own. So I was the first video that he ever released in his life. It was Roger Corman as part of my legacy to roger and it was a big success future kick was the name of it and you can watch it it's, it's on for free it's not what i it, we went through three different directors and really, it, right, because wow. the first one was fired and um then two other directors came on and worked and when they finally finished the film i started off in the movie i believe my character was a um robot but by the end of the movie these directors had changed the storyline i had become genetically engineered human Desperate woman hires an android bounty hunter to track and eliminate her husband's killer. I'll pay you $50,000. So it doesn't make any sense, the movie. If you watch the movie, it's online. It makes no sense. But it made a ton of money for Roger Corman. So, yeah, he started his own distribution company, and I believe he still has it. Uh, well, you know what? It made me, it's gone now because he is retired. He's retired. He's, oh, he's so still alive. Still alive. I didn't even know he was still alive. But he is, yeah, he, I, I talked to him a year ago before the pandemic. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, because he said he's got a guy in China um, who wants to buy the rights to the Blood Fist series because he wants to do a TV series. Really? Okay. So he wants to be able to call it Blood Fist. And he, and he said, Don Will, he wants, he said, I don't have to live in Beijing because they're going to shoot it in Beijing. He said, but you just go in there and shoot in two weeks. He said, you can shoot all your little appearances. He said, so you'll be in each episode, he said, but you won't have really? to stay there. You just do like one or two scenes and so anyway, he asked, but he said, I can't make the sale unless you, you'll go along with it. Will you? And so I said, absolutely, Roger, no problem. I, I, whatever the guy wants, I'm in. So I was responsible for Roger's sale to China. So what happened was we were all scheduled. I'm ready to go to Beijing. And Trump started a thing. It wasn't official, but he started some kind of trade war with China. Mm, yeah, I remember that. Dealing with policies. He did something negative. The Chinese, you know, the Chinese are not... Um, they're not democratic. It's still communist. Yeah, so no, if crazy. you're doing something against the government, the government controls the movie industry. Mm. So like, you know, like the producers, they didn't want, because what was going to happen was this. Here's what our deal was. I, and listen, it maybe get revived. I hope it does. It, it could now, sure. Uh, listen, it, I, I go over, then I get, let them, you've never watched a TV series shot in Beijing, have you? I have never seen one. They don't sell worldwide. They make all their profit off their own country. It's a communist country. It's like closed. They want to provide, but they want to show that their country can get Michael Dudikoff, Billy Blanks, 
um, Olivier Gruner, Cynthia Rothrock, all these B movie guys. I said, they're all my friends. We'll have them on every week. We'll have a different one, several of them, every episode. And they would like, you know, they get a vacation in Beijing, get treated good. They'll make some cash and they'll be in this TV series. And and so basically they they had their perfect guy. Cause I, I, and you know, I'm also a producer. I'm also going to help them. I'll bring over American directors to direct some. Anyway, it was going to be a great thing for them because they can then shoot a series in Beijing. What they said was they wanted to do two versions. Like they're going to do one. It's going to be all Cantonese. They're going to dub me. Then they do a second series where all their characters, all their Chinese speak English. Mm. And we do one version for the American market. Okay. That's what they wanted to do. But I said, once you do that, it's going to sell worldwide. Sure. Because I, I, I've got, uh, my films have sold worldwide for 30 years. I've been doing it since 1988. So, you, you know, uh, that's when Blood Fist was made, 88. Um, I said, and these other guys are all going to um, bring their own audiences as well. Guys like Gary Daniels and, sure. and, you know, mainly, you know, I deal with the B-movie guys. But um, they they loved the idea. It was, per- it was a go and canceled because mm-hmm. of, and then right after that, you know, like I said, I was shooting a movie in Kazakhstan. All filming overseas stopped. Because of the pandemic, well, you know, we 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 there's two American actors, me and um, Bai Ling. If you know her, she's like a little Chinese. She was in The Crow. That's Bai Ling. She was the Asian girl in The Crow. You know, played the bad guy's sister or something. Okay. But Bai Ling and I were there together. We flew back together from uh, Kazakhstan because I told the guy, "You can sue me." I'd been shooting for a week. This movie it was called the name of it's Combat. So I don't know if it ever be completed or not, but. Um, I shot for a week and then I left and I said, you know, you, you can sue me, but I, I, my wife's saying there's a pandemic and in LA, they, they, they were, when I got here, they were out of toilet paper. That was a big thing. Oh, I remember she, that, man. I we can't get toilet paper. What happened? People panicked and they went and bought all the toilet paper. Back up, sure. So, okay. yep. you know, you did future kick with Corman, like how long, yeah. and that was very successful by the way, but how long did you work with Roger Corman anyway? I did 12 movies with him. Really? Yeah, 12 movies. And I used to sign autographs, you know, and I still, you know, I go to these Comic Cons and things like that. So one time I'm in New York with uh, David Carity and we're signing autographs. And, he, and David looks at me and goes, Don, you know, I've done more, starred more movies than any other actor has for Roger Corman. And I said, Yeah, David, how many have you done? And he said, Eight. And I go, David, I've done 12 movies with Roger. <laughs> and I said, He's, He keeps sending me scripts. And he, and he looked at me and it was the only time David Carity ever looked at me with respect. He looks, he goes, wow. He goes, I thought I was the actor who did more with Corman. So, um, yeah, I, I, I've done 12 movies with, with Roger. And I, I tell people that, um, you know, I, I was probably never going to be an actor. Because if you think back, 1985, when I came here, Asian actor starring in Hollywood films. There was one. His name was Shogasugi. Mm, yeah, for and Canon. Joe did uh, ninja movies for Canon. Were you ever but, approached but, by but, Canon, real quick, Don? Like, yeah, because Canon did a lot of martial arts films. Just like the 80s films, we'll look up in the 